Um, I'm very pleased to introduce to you our very first speaker of the series. This man has 45 years experience in the industry of, of the sugar industry. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in sugar engineering from LSU. He's a former Imperial Sugar Vice President of Operations Development. He was the plant manager of CNA Sugar's liquid sugar facility in Hawaii. He served as the, as the Executive Director of Sugar Industries Technologist Incorporation, a position that has taken him and his wife all over the world. But best of all, he's one of our own. He's a native Sugarlander. He was born and raised here. He graduated in the class of 1957. Yeah, you got another one back yeah. there. And and you received a Kemper scholarship to go to LSU, is that correct? Right. You didn't tell me that, but that's important. Uh, he's a big asset to the Sugarland community over the years. Uh, there's a lot that you can read in the program. I'm not going to list all of it. He's just a great, great fellow for the community. But what you might not know about Leon, and I didn't know this, maybe some close friends do, but at LSU, he was champion at doubles badminton. And he started the first chess tournament there. So I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> and he promises to enlighten us tonight about sugar, the essential building block of Sugarland. So please join me in welcoming our own Leon Anheuser. Okay. So what happened in Sugarland? What did we do? Well, as the settlers moved from Louisiana to Texas, they brought a lot of the things they were, were new at. And they got here in this area, and they saw a prairie, a beautiful prairie, flat land, and it just cried out for one of the most expensive commodities in the world, let's grow sugar. So uh, from Missouri City to Eagle Lake, this was a wonderful place to grow sugar cane, and they brought those they brought it here and they started uh, growing it. And the Stafford Mill, which is right down the road here, uh, was operating in 1830 on a one and a half leagues of land and uh, sometimes recognized as the first sugar mill in the area. Uh, these facilities were burned by Santa Ana. He was coming down this way past Richmond, passed over the Brazos, but it was really rainy and bad, muddy tide. And he passed around here under the Southwest Freeway. You know where the bridge goes over <laughs> there? That's how close he came to burning this one, man. He was right over there because they found uh, some cannonballs over there from the Army's movement. Well, he found Stafford's Mill and he burned it down and it was never rebuilt to, uh, to, to that point again because he was really behind after that. We think that the first cane stalks that arrived here were transported up the Brazos River to this area in 1840. Because, you know, you grow seed cane. A lot of you start out with a lot of seed cane, and then you plant that. So every year they have seed cane. So they would get a lot of seed cane from Louisiana and bring it over here. Uh, the sugar cane was planted in Sugar Land, and, and in 1843, a mule powered mill was built. We saw the mule right here. Uh, and it was thought that this mill was called Imperial, and we think it was located at Dam 1, and I think that we were looking up there at the site. I don't know if you know where Dam 1 is, but it's pretty close to uh, the Constellation ballpark over there. Uh, the, mill, the dam is still there, by the way. Kyle and Terry extended the railroad to Richmond uh, through Sugarland, creating this big bend between Stafford and Sugarland, and named the place Sugarland. So if you ever wondered why you had such a big bend in the railroad track, it's because they gave the land to make sure that going from Stafford to Sugarland, I mean, from Stafford to Richmond, it came through Sugarland. And Colonel Cunningham, the Confederate soldier who bought this up, uh, spent a million dollars and built this refinery in the 1990s. And uh, of course, she talked about uh, Kempner and Eldridge, and I'm not going to talk about them. They came in and they, they bought it. Uh, uh, the properties of, and uh, then they started uh, Imperial Sugar. Now about this time, about this time, the soil was getting wore out. The diseases were getting into the cane and they have a lot of diseases. And uh, so it was looking like that it was much better for everybody to change over to other products. 
that were less labor intensive. And as you know, for a long time we used, uh, they used over here uh, the, the labor from the prisons. And then later the prisons took over growing the cane and used the labor for themselves but in the same way and sold the cane to, to this facility. So the building of the char house then uh, in 1925 is significant because it's the changeover from a raw sugar mill using cane as its source to importing raw sugar from foreign countries. Now Kempner, he knew all about that because he was in Galveston. He knew how to import raw sugar from other locations. So they built this char house here for decolorization so you could have white sugar. That's what bone char does. It removes the color from um, the liquor and you can boil it then and have white sugar straight on. So that's, that's what this was about. Now this was the imperial process right here and I'm not going to go into it very, very much detail because most of you probably took the tour, but it was more or less bringing uh, the rail cars here, came from Galveston, dropped the sugar into our warehouse. We had a 40 million pound warehouse here. And then it went in, was weighed, melted, and uh, they added sulfuric acid and lime to make a precipitation of impurities. And uh, then that went over here and was pressure filtered and it goes to the bone char house where he took out the color. And so from there, it would go up to the pan floor. And uh, it, would, it would go through an evaporator. We had a, a double effect evaporator which concentrated the, the uh, liquor to where it's ready, almost ready to crystallize. You go into your vacuum pan, boil the sugar, drop it into a mixer, and it came out through the centrifugals. It was white sugar. And then you went into a bin and they had these uh, dryers. They were rotary drum dryers that turned like this, turned the sugar over, you put steam through it, steam heat through it, and uh, it was dried, put it in a bin, and, and there you were going with your package material. So that's the basic process there. Uh, originally the char house was built for one million pounds a day. And when the refinery closed, it was doing four million pounds a day. And these are some old pictures some of you might have worked over there. You can see that uh, when I first came to work here, the sugar was imported in 325 pound bags into the melt house and they would take it out of the rail car. And that's a, you know, manhand it out, cut it open, drop it into a melter that would be dissolving it. Then they would add the phosphoric acid and lime and they would go through these filters. These were sweetening presses. It would filter out those materials so that there, were no, there was nothing suspended. Then it would go to the pan floor after the char house and they would boil it. This, everything was done by hand. There was absolutely zero automation. These people turned every liquor valve, every steam valve, and everything else. And they read these gauges and he was truly an artist. He made one mistake, he lost it all. And that was dropped down into centrifugals. You can see this centrifugal here. They're spinning away the butter liquor and it's just white sugar. And then this is the dryer right here, rotary germ dryer. It had a lot of fingers in it. And as it rotated, it uh, dropped the sugar down in a curtain, air came through and dried it. Just a cookbook. Interesting thing is here, uh, this was a pretty big bag right here but it was telling you what they would sell. This is 350 pounds. As for Imperial Bonnet, you could buy it in 350 pound bags. And then after it was over with, you made your shirt out of it and you went to school in it. <laughs> <laughs> they did, no kidding. You'd be wearing an Imperial sugar on the back of you. 